What's up everyone, and today I'm bringing a deck profile on my Dark Lords now. This deck honestly took me a while to kind of figure out because for a while I was struggling to really even get much of an end board on it, but after a little bit of a tinkering, I was able to put together a actually pretty good deck. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Now, the Dark Lords are very weird. They all have like a really cool effect, which I'll get to later with their traps, and you can just keep discarding off of them. But first, the two Indulge Dark Lord. Dull Stark Lord, to be honest, I don't like it, but it's necessary. If this card is normal summoned, normal or special summoned, you can take two Dark Lord monsters from your hand or deck with different names, except the indulged special one of them to your opponent's field and def defense position and add the other to your hand. And it has a downside for the rest of the turn. You cannot activate effects of the monsters except fairies. So it kind of locks you into fairy monsters effects, which isn't the biggest deal. Mainly because you got cards like IP Massacre in which you can just then link someone during your opponent's turn. If anything, it stops you from going into stuff like Verte, which yes, we do run because why not? It's essentially one of your biggest starters for the deck, but also one of your the card that kind of holds you back the most in the same way. Like uh, Indulge Dark Lord is the only Dark Lord we run that restricts us on fairies. Next, I run three Dark Lord Ixchil. Ixchil, you can discard this card and one Dark Lord to draw two cards. And as a quick effect, pay a thousand life points to target Dark Lord spell trap in your graveyard. Apply this card's effect. Apply that card's effect. So essentially, it can make this effect that spells or traps effect, which can be pretty useful because their traps are actually pretty good. And in the same way as how like Verte and Dra Dragoon to our, even if you use Red Eyes Fusions, you're not going to have the activation requirements. That really helps out with the. Dark Lords because all the uh, Dark Lords have a trap to you that requires you to send a Dark Lord from hand or field to activate their effects. If you use them through the effects of like Ixchil or the Dark Lords, it will kind of bypass that. Also run 3 Superbia. Basically, if it's supposed to summon, it's supposed to summon a fairy monster in your graveyard. It's really, it's really if it's supposed to summon, it becomes a monster born for your fairies in the grave. I run 2 Dark Lord you could back. When you get back is a normal special summon, you can essentially foolish any card from your deck to your graveyard or any any Dark Lord card. So you could send a spell trap or a monster. I run the two Dark Lord Nastin. Nastin I run a two since it can special summon itself from the hand by discarding two Dark Lord cards and you want the Dark Lord traps in the grave and you also want cards like Superbia in the grave as well, so it's not really much of a downside. I run the one M Dusk. M does you can discard this card and a Dark Lord card. Target one Dark Lord card in your graveyard, add to your hand. And then during another play's turn, like Ixchel, and that's thing you can do it due to uh, copy the effects of a spell or trap. All the higher level Dark Lords minus uh, Superbia can essentially do that. I also run the one Dark Lord Zerato. Zerato, you can send one Dark Monster from your hand to the graveyard to destroy all monsters your opponent controls, so it's a Raigeki in a way. So I'm only run it one. It can be useful sometimes, but not all the times. I run the one Morning Star. Once per turn, you can send the top card of your deck to the graveyard, or you can send cards from the top of your deck equal. You send cards from the top of your deck from deck to graveyard equal to the number of Dark Lord monsters you control. Then you gain 500 life points for each. And while you control another Dark Lord monster, your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. Morning Star, we mainly only run for the fusion. If you want to take the fusion out, that is also an option. Maybe you just uh, bump the M Dust up to two or Nashton up to three. Also around three, Angel 01. Angel 01 is essentially a free summon for fairies. Well, high level fairies, because if you control a level seven or, or if you have a level seven or higher monster in your hand, you can spell summon Angel 01. And it can also give you an extra tr summon. So that's uh, pretty cool and also works really well with the Link Monster, Condemned Dark Lord, which uh, whenever we attribute summon a monster, we can use monsters in our graveyard by banishing. And uh, I also run Scythe Lock with the Daster, Celestial, and Artifact Scythe. Since Dagda is a fairy monster and uh, sometimes we can get locked into fairies through Indulge Dark Lord, having that, uh, we can go into Scythe, still use Scythe, or Dagda, use Dagda's effects at the Scythe. And at least with Indulge Dark Lord, it doesn't lock us into special summoning the only fairies. It just locks us into activating the effects of fairies. So, like, you can still summon uh, Phoenix of Forcer and just do Scythe on your opponent's turn. Moving on to the spells. I run three, Banishment of the Dark Lord, as well as three, Dark Lord Contract. 
Basmus is your searcher, contra contract is your monster born. Also run the two, Valhalla, Hall of the Fallen. One, one problem I noticed with this deck really early on is that summoning monsters is not its forte. Like there'll be a lot of hands to where maybe you summon one or two monsters and that can be a bit of a downside. So that's why I won the one Valhalla to kind of like, or not the one, the two Valhalla to kind of like help with that. Two Allure and a card destruction for draw power, as well as the Pod Sires. I run the two full of of goods. You want to get your uh, traps into the graveyard so you can copy their effects onto the monsters. One monster born, just a good card. And it can help you in the lack of special summoning department. I run the two fusion destiny and a call by the grave because a hand trap can really hurt this deck. Something like a, a veiler or ash may not hurt too much, but something like a droll, yeah, that will kill this deck in, in an instant. Moving on to traps, I run the one sanctioned dark lord. You can negate the effects of one face of effect monster in the field, one enhancement. Tire face up monster, your opponent controls, take control of it until the end phase. Rebellion, throw one card in the field. Uprising, fusion summon the Dark Lord Fusion. All of them have a, the cost to where you gotta send a Dark Lord monster from hand or face up field to the graveyard to activate them, but if they're used via the Dark Lords, then, then you don't really have to pay that cost. And I really only want, want to run one because you'd rather see them in the grave and send them to uh, the graveyard from the deck, so you don't really want to draw them as much, but if you draw them, it's not the base problem, it's just, it's much more costly. Moving on to the extra deck. I run two Condemned Dark Lord. Condemned Dark Lord, you can tribute some fairy monsters but that require two tributes by banishing two monsters from your graveyard instead of tributing, and it's still considered a tribute summon. You can discard one card, take one Dark Lord monster from your deck, either add it to their hand, or send it to your graveyard. And uh, once returned during the year round phase, Gain five relying points for each fairy monster on the field. So it's really, it sounds like it's really good, but with the way the Dark Lords are, sometimes it's not really going to be your best option as, as all of that as that sounds. Most often times when you go into it, you're just going to add a. It depends on your hand. If you have like let's say a contract in hand and you want to send Superbia, or you can add one of her. You can add Ixchil. It really just depends on what's in your hand. Also run the one dark. Just a good thing too that we can easily go into. One Herald of Mirage Lights. When a spell or trap card effect is activated, quick effect, send a fairy monster from your hand to the graveyard, negate the activation. So it works against your spells or your opponent's spells and traps. I run two IP Mask Reina, the one Phoenix, Cerberus, and Unicorn. I'd say IP Mask Reina is a must. Like we're not just running the IP package because it's good. Well it is, but the one downside to the Indulge Dark Lord is that about uh, not being able to use the effect of monsters except fairies. You can go into the IP Mascarena, then use IP Mascarena effect to summon out any of the Nightmares or an Opelousa or something during your opponent's turn. So if you want to bring out an Opelousa, this can kind of bypass that restriction. Obviously the one Dagda, the one Verte, also run an Opelousa, an access code. Also run one, the first Dark Lord. First, not the second, even though there is a next second. I just wanted to say that for kind of no reason. So if this card is fusion summoned using a Morning Star as material, you can destroy all cards your opponent controls. And during the main phase, quick effect, pay a thousand life points, spell summon one fairy monster from your hand or graveyard in defense position. And your fairies cannot be targeted with card effects. So it can, it's good, but I feel like it could, it's a little underpowered, but I can definitely do, like, obviously you can spell summon one of your Dark Lords. If you have a trap in the graveyard, then you can use that monster. You summon, like, let's say you summon Ixchil off of the Dark Lord. Then you can just use the effect of Ixchil to copy the effect of one of the Dark Lord traps. And also run the one Phoenix Enforcer. So let me know what you think of Dark Lords. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's a very interesting deck. Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video I make. Bye.